Introducing the all new Corolla. Hengel gave a frank assessment of cuts the Pentagon and the White House feel are needed to deal with continued sequestration. But Hagel says the savings are structured in a way to preserve key U.S. military goals, homeland defense, strategic deterrence, and defeating terrorist threats. They're also well suited to the strategies rebalanced to the Asia-Pacific region, to sustaining security commitments to the Middle East and Europe, and our engagement in other regions. Hagel says the president's DOD budget recommendations to Congress early next month will seek to protect capabilities uniquely suited to the most likely missions of the future, most notably special operations forces for counterterrorism and crisis response. The strategy also means a budget win for Guam's Global Hawk surveillance mission, but with the loss of other platforms first. In addition to the A-10, the Air Force will also retire the 50-year-old U-2 in favor of the unmanned Global Hawk system. This decision was a close call, as DOD had previously recommended retaining the U-2 over the Global Hawk because of cost issues. But Hagel says with its greater range and endurance, the Global Hawk makes a better high-altitude reconnaissance platform for the future. Still, Hagel outlined big cuts, including Army and Army National Guard and Reserve manpower reductions, service-wide cuts in housing allowances, subsidies to commissaries, and further cuts to planes and ships if full sequestration is renewed in 2016. The Navy's fleet would continue to be modernized and expanded by two destroyers and two attack subs per year, though the George Washington carrier out of Japan could be mothballed if full cuts are restored in 2016. On Capitol Hill, Matt Kay for PNC News.